Welcome to Module 4 of the Megat Sensing Systems Industrial Vibration Training Course, Diagnostics Part A. In this module, we will cover how to diagnose unbalance, misalignment, and gear related problems. Unbalance is the force generated when a difference between a rotational center line and a mass center line exists. This force occurs at running speed of the rotating assembly, or 1 times RPM. The vibration amplitude due to imbalance will increase by the square of the speed. If you double the speed of the rotor, we will increase the vibration amplitude due to unbalance by a factor of 4. When unbalance is the problem, the vibration response will occur at 1 times rotational speed. When imbalance is the problem, the 1 times is the dominant energy in the spectrum. The waveform will be sinusoidal, and typically, the radial measurements are higher than the actual measurements. There are three types of unbalance, force unbalance, couple unbalance, and dynamic unbalance. All three types of unbalance exhibit vibration at one times rotational speed. To distinguish between them, we need to use phase readings. The phase is represented in the presentation by the turquoise arrows. Force unbalance will exhibit a dominant one times rotational speed amplitude. The horizontal as well as the vertical phase readings will be in phase. There will be a 90 degree phase shift from the horizontal measurement plane to the vertical measurement plane. This type of unbalance can be corrected with a single plane weight placement. Couple unbalance will exhibit a vibration response similar to force unbalance. In addition, couple unbalance will exhibit high axial amplitudes as well as high radial amplitudes. The horizontal and vertical phase reading should exhibit a 180 degree phase shift. There should be a 90 degree phase shift from the horizontal plane to the vertical plane. Couple unbalance will require two plane or multi plane balancing weight placement to correct. Dynamic unbalance is a combination of force unbalance and couple unbalance. The dominant vibration amplitudes will occur at 1 times rotational speed. Radial phase readings will be unsteady from 0 to 180 degrees. The horizontal phase shift should match the vertical phase shift. Dynamic unbalance will require a multi-plane balance weight placement to correct. Overhung fans exhibit special vibration characteristics. High axial 1 times readings as well as high radial 1 times readings are common on both bearings. The actual phase reading should be in phase. The horizontal phase readings can be unsteady. There are many causes of unbalance. Poor balancing standards for repairs or new equipment, assembly errors such as the wrong shaft key length, machining tolerances stack up error, eccentric components, wear corrosion, material buildup just to name a few. So how do we determine what are the acceptable levels of unbalance? There are two standards that are commonly used, the ISO and API standard. ISO assigns a G rating based on the amount of residual imbalance. The API standard designates the remaining unbalance as Umax expressed in ounce inches. Misalignment is a condition when two shaft center lines are no longer collinear. Misalignment is widely regarded as the most common cause for machinery vibration in industry today. It can be detected with the use of vibration analysis. The vibration response from misalignment can be very distinct. This allows the user to easily identify different misalignment conditions. The vibration response from misalignment will vary depending on the type of misalignment and the coupling type. Angular misalignment will often have a one times rotational speed response, while parallel misalignment will have a two times rotational speed response. Phase measurements will help distinguish misalignment from other faults like unbalance. The phase readings will shift 180 degrees when measured across the misaligned components. The waveform will also begin to look triangular in nature. There are two types of misalignment, offset or parallel misalignment, and angular misalignment. Offset misalignment will commonly produce a vibration response at multiples of rotational speed. Two times, three times, four times, and six times are all common. 
Angular misalignment will commonly produce a vibration response at one time's rotational speed, with the axial direction often being the highest in amplitude. While this is often the case, it is not always true. Depending on the coupling type employed, the vibration response may vary from one machine to the next. Offset misalignment traditionally has been characterized as producing a vibration response at two times rotational speed, which is typically highest in the radial direction. With vertical offset, it is expected that the highest amplitude of two times vibration will occur in the vertical direction. With horizontal offset, it is expected that the highest amplitude of two times vibration will occur in the horizontal direction. This assumption can often be misleading. A combination of the two types will create a vibration that is not necessarily purely directional in one measurement plane or the other. Offset misalignment traditionally is characterized with a 180 degree phase shift across the coupling in the radial direction. It is important to look at the machine as a whole and not just the readings across the coupling. Pure offset misalignment traditionally will exhibit lower axial readings when compared to the radial readings. Angular misalignment is characterized as having a higher than one times rotational speed vibration with the highest amplitudes often in the axial direction. With angular misalignment, the phase shift across the coupling should occur in the axial direction. The analyst must consider the orientation of the transducer when collecting axial phase readings and make the necessary corrections to obtain accurate phase measurements. While the one times rotational speed vibration is the most common response to angular misalignment, it is not uncommon to find a two times rotational speed vibration being the highest in amplitude. This can make it difficult to distinguish between offset and angular misalignment based on the spectral data alone. Soft foot is a condition that occurs when one or more of the machine feet are not in the same plane as the others. Soft foot will create an elevated one times rotational speed vibration and a higher than normal amplitude at two times line frequency if it's on a motor. This elevation in two times line frequency is created when the soft foot is tightened and the foot pulls on the case, creating case distortion. Coupling type can be a major contributing factor to the vibration response of misalignment. Different coupling types will create different vibration responses. A bun style coupling may exhibit the traditional one times or two times vibration response. However, a three jaw coupling, the three times vibration is the best indicator of alignment condition. Grid style or gear couplings will vary depending on how many grid elements or gear teeth are in the load zone. A bent shaft can exhibit either a high one times or a high two times depending on the location of the bend in relation to the support structure. If the bend is close to one of the supports or bearings, then it is likely that two times vibration will be the dominant vibration. If the bend is farther away from the supports or centered between them, it is likely that one times rotational speed will be the predominant vibration. With misalignment, the phase shift is across the point of power transmission, or the coupling. With a bent shaft, the phase shift will occur across the bent portion of the shaft. A 180 degree phase shift can be expected across the bend in the axial direction. A bearing that is cocked on the shaft will exhibit higher than normal levels of vibration in the actual direction. This vibration will occur at one times rotational speed and more significantly at two times rotational speed. The best method to distinguish a cock bearing from any other condition is to take the actual phase readings around the face of the bearing in question. If the bearing is straight on the shaft, the phase will remain steady plus or minus 30 degrees at all positions. In the case of a cocked or misaligned bearing, there will be a phase shift of 180 degrees from one position to the same position in the opposite direction. For example, if the phase is taken at the 2 o'clock position and indicates 20 degrees, then the phase is taken at the 8 o'clock position and indicates 200 degrees, it is likely that the bearing is cocked on the shaft. The phase shift can be at any two locations around the face of the bearing that are 180 degrees apart. There are many causes of misalignment. Some of them include using poor alignment tolerances when performing alignments, using less accurate methods of alignment like a straight edge, using good methods but bad practices like poorly designed bases, and dynamic influences like thermal growth or pipe strain.
Any gear set will generate a vibration response. Gear-related vibration can be normal. It can also be an indication of gear-related problems such as gear wear, gear misalignment, cracked or broken teeth, or other problems. It is normal for a gear set to generate vibration at its gear mesh frequency and its harmonics. One times, two times, and three times gear mesh frequency are all normal, but they should be at relatively low amplitudes. Gear wear is characterized as having elevated levels of gear mesh frequency and harmonics with sidebands that are spaced at running speed of the defective gear. As gear wear progresses, the sideband amplitudes will increase as well as the number of sidebands. The gear natural frequency can be present, and often the two and three times gear mesh frequency amplitudes are elevated. Gear mesh frequency is the primary indicator of excessively loaded gears. The gear mesh frequency can be very sensitive to load, causing sudden increases or decreases in the gear mesh frequency amplitudes as the load changes. Elevated gear mesh frequency does not necessarily mean excessively loaded gears. Gear eccentricity and backlash problems will create elevated levels of gear mesh frequency with sidebands spaced at the rotational speed of the eccentric gear. The gear's natural frequency can be present with sidebanding and running speed harmonics of the eccentric gear can be elevated. Gear misalignment will produce an increase in running speed harmonics of the affected gears. Higher than normal levels of two times, three times, or even higher multiples of gear mesh frequency are common, with sidebanding spaced at two times the shaft's rotational speed. Cracked or broken gear teeth will increase the amplitude of the one times rotational speed vibration peak. The gear's natural frequency can also be present, however the best indicator of cracked or broken gear teeth is found in the waveform. Impacting spaced at the rotational speed of the damaged gear will be evident. Many factors can cause gear-related problems, such as coupling or shaft misalignment,